Hey, what's up guys? Um, I'm Trez. Uh, welcome to um, Ramblings of a Metalhead Part 2. Um, in last uh, video, I know I had to cut it short because um, it, it was like 42, 44 minutes long. And I just started fucking being totally belligerent uh, to point of fucking total drunk and um, started fighting with the camera started fighting with the vinyls I couldn't put them back in the fucking uh, into their sleeves so yeah that went that went to shit but um, in this video um, I want to talk about a subject that has been talked to death of I gotta point that out on YouTube is a uh, elitism in metal or being a fucking elitist um, no, I'm not going to bore you to death for what uh, my definition of elitism is, which I, I shall put up here now, so you can see what elitism is, and and uh, so that you could under, understand what the fuck I'm trying to talk about. Um, in any case, um, cheers, by the way. Now, um, my experience with elitism... Um, came when I went to El Salvador for the first time and I experienced that shit firsthand. No, I'm sorry, I keep bringing El Salvador, it's just that's where the fuck I grew up. Well, at least, you know, during my uh, metal, uh, when I first started listening to metal, I, I started obviously here and then went to El Salvador and then <laughs> that shit was wild. And um, I hit a fucking brick wall right off the bat. I mean, Metalheads everywhere, but what I didn't know, at least I don't know if it's like that in any other country, but um, um, back in the day, I'm talking about the early 90s, um, at least in El Salvador, at least in my uh, my case, um, all the genres were were separate. Like all the all the fan base of certain genres were just totally. Uh, separated and we all I guess all the genres hated each other like uh, black metal was on their own death metal and thrash were was on their own and god forbid we saw uh, a, they saw a kid that liked punk because uh, they would just beat the shit out of him and that's how it was back in the day um, I'm pretty sure it's not like that now at least I hope and um uh, but yeah, it was like, I never understood that, because I liked every kind of fucking genre. I still like every fucking genre. I like fucking, uh, from punk to crust to grind to uh, doom to um, fucking raw black metal or cult or what you think cult is, which I still don't fully understand what cult is. I think that's the elitism part of black metal that... Uh, um, that the cult is I mean in my opinion when you start putting labels to at least black metal and rules I mean then it's not black metal because black metal is anti everything and anti religious anti every kind of fucking shit possible and uh, once you start putting rules in it yeah, it loses its um, uh, status I guess um, but yeah um I witnessed that firsthand because um, we were always um, very separate from every other genre. Uh, granted, like I said in the previous video, I never um, liked black metal. I think that was kind of like a, a cultural thing when I was over there in El Salvador because we were all uh, being forced to be separate. Um, so I think that was part of my never... Um, liking black metal or at least the bands that i accepted for black metal which i said previously were um only uh mayhem um which i got the original tape from when that shit first came out um dark funeral which i love fucking dark funeral and old man's child <laughs> excuse me um everything else to me was fucking trash like um uh, uh, me and my friend growing up with um, my good friend, uh, brother. Um, oh, we used to grow up and watching this channel, um, Channel 23. They used to give uh, fucking uh, metal videos. It was always the same two or three tapes, just over and over. Um, and when Emperor came out, we hated that shit. 
fucking Immortal came out. We hated that shit. We were always waiting for a fucking Sepultura to come out, Cannibal Corpse. Um, you know, such bands like fucking Death Metal and shit. And um, good times, by the way. Um, afterwards, I really got into black metal, as you could fucking obviously see. But um, I understand that that part of elitism that stood, that was the asshole um, type of, of elitism and separation of, of genres and fans, which I uh, really don't like and I really hate that there, that um, there was such a thing. I don't know if anybody else experienced that that shit, but I did. It kind of sucked in a way. Um, but um, what I mean by uh, a blurred line between being a, a, a devoted hardcore fan and uh, being fucking elitist is, um, let's say you go to a show and um, you're there with your friends and you have your battle vest or um, uh, fucking metal vest. And um, um, you spend so much time and effort to um, picking out the, the patches that you want uh, for your vest, which I haven't even done, because I have enough patches for like three fucking vests and I'm just fucking lazy, I haven't done shit. Um, but you know how you put your patches in. It could be a themed um, vest or it could be whatever the fuck you want, it's your shit. So if you want fucking uh, mortician with AMSG or fucking uh, uh, Arch Goat and uh, Satanic War Master, that's up to you. But um, what I mean is, is um, you spend your time to put your vest how you want it. And uh, you um, love that genre of that band so much that you're willing enough to, you know, stitch it yourself or whatever, put it on your, um, your vest. And that's your vest. You don't just leave your vest anywhere or you don't fuck around with your vest. And uh, for someone to come in and ridicule that shit or make fun of that band or tell you, that band is fucking shit. Oh, I mean, I get offended, you know, I... (laughs) There's a point of making fun of someone in a a fun kind of way, like not being such such a fucking asshole about it, because I I know that, because my brother-in-law, he... uh, experience that shit first time to be put by me because <laughs> um sometimes when we work together so every time i uh ray shout out to you brother love you um we work together so um every time i go by his office i go in there and i go in there like like the fuck are you listening to he's probably listening to van halen or fucking uh, some other shit corn or something i'm always like but I'm being, a, you know, obviously a, a, f- a fun way of, um, not a fucking asshole way, at least I hope not. Uh, but uh, I know that um, some stuff that I listen to, like this, that he doesn't like at all. He doesn't understand. He thinks it's fucking depressive and uh, uh, it's just it's just bad, which I fucking relish and fucking love. But it's all, all depends on how we see stuff and how we like stuff. It's like colors, you know, there's colors for everybody. To me, it's all fucking dark and gray shit. Um, but I, I do like my fucking punk and, and ska shit, so it all depends what we like and what our mood is. But um, to have someone come in and uh, literally just put you down on what the fuck you listen to, that's fucking being, uh, fucking, not being just a leader, that's just being a fucking dick. Uh, or a fucking asshole. And, um,. But, like, being a hardcore fan about something, you might come across as elitist, as in, um, the whole thing about the best. Um, you have someone that comes in and ridicules your shit, even though they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You can tell when someone doesn't know the genre or the band, and, uh, to, uh, it's, you get very spiteful when, um, someone ridicules your shit because you spend so much time invested in the band in the genre on purchasing their merchandise and have it on you like a vest or a t-shirt um i mean if someone talks shit about mortician we're, we're, we're going to fucking we're going in bro but um and that so cheers
I start gathering my thoughts because I'm starting to ramble. So, um, like um, another interesting um, part about being a hardcore fan is that um, when you grow up, um, like I said before, you grow up with a thick skin. Now, sometimes that may get misconstrued as being a fucking elitist, but you're just trying to, you're just so, um, it's in your nature as a metalhead to protect yourself and protect your image and to fight for what you like. And getting that shit uh, made fun of fucking pisses you off, and I understand that. And you might, you're so overprotected that you may come off as elitist. And, um, like, for example, I know I might ruffle some feathers here with some what I'm about to say, but uh, you gotta understand my point of view, so fucking don't kill me. Relax. I know there's a couple of people that, <laughs> that I know that are gonna get it. not offended, but say, like, fuck you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, headbangers ball. I grew up in over there in uh, Latin America or Latin America, um, and we had headbangers ball as well. But when I came back over here and I saw headbangers ball, by the time I get he got here, it was at its end, and. Uh, we saw uh, reruns of it with um, uh, my wife and my brother-in-law, and uh, he saw Ricky Rackman, or Rackman. I was like, fuck is that? So, hold on, hold on, hold on, relax, relax. And, and everybody was like, what the fuck do you mean who the fuck that is? Don't you fucking see who that is? That's fucking Ricky Rackman, or whatever his name is. So I'm like... Okay, so what? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> ready to fucking punch me out and shit. But over there, growing up in um, Latin America, we had Al Alfredo, whatever his name is. But he was the fucking man, you know. He, had, he brought fucking Morbid Angel. He had this fucking throne that he, um, uh, the only person was allowed to sit here, sit there was Ozzy Osbourne when he interviewed him. It was off the fucking walls. And um, to me, a headbanger's ball was fucking Alfredo, and whatever his fucking last name is, which I'll probably put on the description down below or put it right there, real nice. So his name was Alfredo. So yeah. So a lot of people, depends on where you grew up with, you take offense if someone was like, who the fuck is that dude? And you're like, what do you mean? Who the fuck is that dude? I'll show you who the fuck that dude is. But, like I said, we're very protective on how we grew up and what we grew up with. Like, if you made fun of... A lot of people don't like this band that I that I fucking love. is um, um, Macabre. And I know it's, it's goofy and um, it's meant to be goofy. But I fucking like, I like it because I grew up on that shit. Those were like the first grindcore that I ever heard. Without it being grindcore-ish. But, yeah. If you... Uh, We'll make fun of uh, Macabre, we were going to fucking blows. So, yeah, that's my um, thing um, when you have a, a blurred line between being a hardcore fan of anything. Because, like I said, that whole headbangers ball type thing. I know when I said that, it was like... <gasps> but... You gotta understand some people, and sometimes we um, do it. At, um, at, it's so natural that um, we defend stuff, being metalheads as we are, and that sometimes it might come across to another person as, "Ah, oh, you fucking elitist, fuck you." But we're just being hardcore fans. I'm not trying to defend elitist, because um, to me, elitist is not um, caring about any other thing let's say if you're into old school shit and that's all there is to you uh, be just old school shit nothing else nothing new and you won't tolerate or accept anything besides that man fuck you you need you have to have an open mind when it, especially with metal metal is such a melting pot 
uh, between culture, between um, all kinds of uh, um, uh, lyrics, um, themes in, in metal. I mean, if you want to feel fucking um, obviously depressed, you can go to um, Depressive Black Metal. Or if um, you want to feel good about yourself, um, at least to me, I listen to a lot of um, hardcore because it has positive uh, lyrics in it, all about empowering yourself and feeling um, good about yourself. And also uh, what I call uh, Swedish metal or um, our new wave thrash metal, um, which I also have um, said, um, to, at least to the people who know me, don't get offended, um, uh, feel good metal. And when I say feel good metal, I mean Swedish um, metal, especially during the 90s. I'm not talking about Entombed, um, Nihilist, obviously, but um, Dismember, all that fucking classic good shit. I'm talking about, um, when I mean Swedish metal, and I'm planning on making a video of this just pure Swedish metal, I'm talking about not the, the, big, uh, uh, the big bands that came out, like obviously Entombed, Dismember, all that other shit. Um, I'm talking about um, the era of the 90s, um, middle, mid 90s to um, mid 2000s, uh, which that genre kind of fizzled out in a way. But um, I'm talking about uh, when At the Gates came out and everything else came out before, uh, after that, like uh, The Haunted. Um, um, remember, um, Soil Work in flames that's what I mean by feel good metal and um, I totally forgot what the fuck I'm talking about <laughs> so yeah uh, there's that point um, so I totally fucking forgot what the fuck I'm talking about and this video is already 17 minutes late but in short, I don't know if um, I proved any point, um, but going back to um, how you grew up and stuff, obviously um, being elitism or elitist in certain things and certain genres as fucking metalheads, it's it's you have to have an open mind. Um, you have to accept change and um, new genres that spring up because that's that's the thing about metal um, you at first it was basic you know you had um, you had uh, Black Sabbath you had fucking uh, uh, Venom you had fucking Metallica King Diamond everything started Iron Maiden everything started fucking multiplying and stuff then you had um death uh, or uh, possession with um, or possessed I'm sorry I keep on fucking up with that name possessed with um, the first death metal album and um, and everything uh, progressed through that you had uh, the mixture between uh, thrash and death metal the, you know the what the natural state that became from thrash to uh, death metal then you had um, Doom. Then you had um, genres. Because back then, um, if you guys remember um, Eric and um, uh, Relapse and Roadrunner, you had also labels like uh, Peaceville Records, which I fucking love everything that uh, Peaceville has ever done. Especially with their logo, with a little pentagram on the eye, and there it's like fucking amazing. And. Um, what I mean by by this is that if you guys collected any of the DVDs from uh, Eric back in the day or videos back in the day tapes, there was um, there was no genre defined there. It was like death metal, and you had uh, Paradise Lost, you had uh, Cathedral, you had um, uh, what is it, Candlemas? I think it was. But you had uh, Napalm Death. You had all those genre, all those bands, and all those different genres that. Uh, you didn't even know what the fuck they were until they were defined later and from cathedral being doom or um, 
being that fucking genre that um, Doom is called. Uh, uh, there's so many sub genres of Doom, like Cathedral, that uh, is just crazy that I don't even know myself that I can't keep track of. But uh, for those people that um, don't dislike the recent genre, um, Deathcore that just fizzled, I think is fizzling out right now. Kind of like uh, Metalcore was very popular in the mid 90s, like Shadows Fall. They're still playing. I don't even, I don't even know they're still playing. Shadows Fall um, started out as a metalcore, hardcore ish band crossover type thing and uh, they embraced what uh, metalcore was like uh, as I lay dying uh, what is this a kill switch engage you know, bands like that but that whole kind of scene is kind of fizzled out recently and um, that's okay and kill switch engage is still doing it. I'm surprised um, that I didn't know of uh, Shadowfall is still doing it which I didn't know because I'm not um, totally in, engaged, I guess, in that um, genre. And we fall in and out of favor with genres that fade out. Kind of like how heavy metal kind of uh, faded out. And um, there's still bands playing it, if you're into that stuff. It's like there's still bland, bands playing um, metalcore and deathcore. Deathcore progressed into a weird um, hybrid which is uh, between deathcore and slam which is slamcore I guess if you want to put a label on it at least I think but um, there's so many subgenres like um, like <laughs> we had this argument with my brother-in-law when when I first I told him this is called slam he's like there's no fucking such thing as slam. I'm like, yo, dude, there is. Slam started, you know, to me, at least early beginnings with um, uh, three factors. Suffocation from uh, Effigy of the Forgotten. I forgot what song. Uh, League of Inveracity that had this uh, really cool slam part in it. Jin, 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 jigga, jin, 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 jin. Yeah. And then in, everything internal bleeding has ever done. It's that's what started slam. It's like those riffs, um, without anything else. It's just those um, chunky, chunky riffs, and that's what the whole song was. Uh, two to three minutes. That's uh, pretty much your um, uh, typical slam song. But that's a hybrid of um, death metal going onto brutal death metal, going into slam. And uh, I remember he never kind of was like, no, nah, this stuff's fucking thing. I'm like, well, it doesn't, it, it doesn't show up on Wikipedia. I'm like, it doesn't fucking have to show up in Wikipedia. It's like the natural or subgenre state of metal. And um, metal meshes into so many subgenres. Um, like you have um, uh, black metal, and then you have uh, war metal, and then you have black and death metal, black and thrash, and it goes on from there. You have so many um, bands and so many genres that are out. It's just insane to think about. And, um, you know, you gotta um, give it up to bands that are um, pushing the boundaries. And you also gotta uh, accept the fact that there there are bands out there that have, uh, let's say, a Slayer worship. Uh, every band that sounds like Slayer is not a blatant ripoff of Slayer. It's just their um, influence. When you have a band or you try to play guitar and do certain things, um, you I and I hate those people that think that um, I don't have uh, influence or this is just me playing this shit. Man, fuck that shit. Fuck you, whoever you think that way. Because you have to base it off of something, and I don't mean that as a, a fucking general rule like saying like uh, cult black metal has to have a rule no what i mean by that is that um you think of um things that you're passionate about and this doesn't necessarily have to mean music as in um your, your state of mind your state of uh politics because politics even though i don't like to think about them in, in metal 
there's a lot of politics in fucking metal, but um, whether is it the, the earth, your spirit, your feelings, your love, your hate, um, all goes into the way you create music. And for you to say, oh, this is just fucking me, fucking, this is what comes out. No, 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 fuck you. There's no, there's, there's never a thing. You may not um, realize what um, you're doing but someone else might someone else might like oh that shit sounds like um subconsciously may sound like something that you do love you do like so um i'm totally kind of lost in the whole subject of elitism but um it's part in there in in a way because um when you take that stance like this is what i create this is just me doing this. No, it's not. Don't have that mentality because you're closing your, your own mind. And Because after a point, you won't have anything original to make. You have to embrace what you love. This is my fucking influences. Brutal, grindcore darkened fucking black metal and you have to grab shit from, from stuff you love as a metal fan you have to embrace what you grew up with you're protected of your music you're protected of yourself and you're protected of your image granted but you have to have an open mind and that's what I that's the blurred line that I think exists between being a hardcore fan of a certain genre of a certain state of mind of a certain feeling that you have where you're totally into fucking black metal that you think ah satan but guess what you have to go to work so you know just have an open mind explore genres like I say to everybody I don't really like power metal like I fuck it it's not my cup of tea but uh, there are some uh, power metal songs that I do when you put it on I'm like fuck like a fucking little girl too um, and we're all that way we all get caught off guard uh, denouncing something and then on the flip coin we're like oh fuck did it you say you didn't like that shit well, what the fuck are you doing you do like that shit so cheers I gotta get another beer hold on and I gotta pee real bad and this video is almost like something an hour long, it's 28 minutes, so this is definitely going fucking very, very bad, for those of you who stick around, and this is going to become a, a, apparently a fucking series of uh, metalhead ramblings, or ramblings of a metalhead, whatever the fuck I called it, um, cheers. My, my whole point in this whole thing is that um, do not think that um, you should be so defensive and not open-minded to new things and new genres that spring out that you're like, fuck that shit, that's not real metal, because it is, it is labeled under metal. Now we had this whole progression between uh, death metal, brutal death metal, technical death metal, and now you have tech death. And then between tech death and brutal death metal, you had um, uh, what do you call it? Deathcore. For those of you who might not accept that, it is in there somewhere. So just try to have an open mind on things, learn new things, um, and like always like i always end these things uh take care of each other take care of yourself uh, support local bands and other bands you like 
by buying their merchandise, um, getting into their shit, and, yeah, so, peace out, take it easy. Cheers.